Hey, welcome to an episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name's Jake. In today's episode, I'm going to show you guys my DIY 7500 watt solar system for under three grand. Now, if that type of content is something you're into, do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out. So without further ado, the first thing I'm going to do is give you guys a little unboxing of my Grow Watt Grid Tie Inverter. Uh, this just showed up a couple of hours ago. Couldn't wait to unbox it and show it to you guys. But as we unbox this, I'm going to kind of explain how I went about deciding on these particular products. So I've watched a, a channel called DIY Solar Power by a guy named Will Prouse. Highly recommend you guys check him out. But he was the first one to introduce me to some used solar panels from a company called Santan Solar. And after seeing him do some some tests on these panels to see if they worked or if they were legitimate, mm -hmm. I was very impressed, uh, especially considering how much they cost. And there's lots of pros and cons to this, but I am trying to build the most cost-effective solar system I possibly can. And if you are too, then I recommend paying attention to the following products here. So as I go through this unboxing, you got your user manual, you've got some various uh, adapters and plugs. Uh, essentially what you got in the box here is a main power cable. It's an SO cable, which means it's kind of like an extension cable hookup. Very easy to hook up and then plug into the grid. Uh, you've got a data connection port I believe that's an 8 pin and then you're gonna have a uh, MC4 connectors you got two male two female this is what you're going to connect to your solar wires uh, and then the last thing in there actually there's two more things one of them is the USB Wi-Fi dongle uh, the Wi-Fi dongle is basically the way you're going to communicate with this thing so that you have some type of user interface it does have a led display on the front of it but i don't recommend going through all the programming on it uh, it's better to just get it connected to the network then you can sit down go to the website they have a pretty cool user interface really easy to navigate set this thing up and there is a ton of support out there a lot of youtube videos about their products um, it's just the most cost-effective solution that I could find and to top it off I hear great reviews on these so hopefully this works out really well but I will continue to document this process as we go uh, here in just a moment I'm gonna pull this thing out of the box so that you can get an idea of its size possibly even the weight uh, it weighs approximately I think 20 to 25 pounds um, there are I think four or five different units that have different specifications. In other words, uh, one of them can output 3,000 watts. This one can output 6,000. The highest one in that particular chassis can put out 7,600 watts. And then you have the, I think, 8,200 through the 11,400, which they also share the same chassis different from this particular one. Uh, but moving on to this particular unit here, it is capable of producing 6,000 watts. However, it can accept, uh, or your solar panels can produce quite a bit more than that, uh, but you're only going to get 6,000 watts out of it back into your grid. So, as you can see, this is about... 14 and a half inches by 13 and a half inches. I think the actual dimensions are 14.8 by 13.8 um, Does not balance very well on a table <laughs> So I recommend laying it down on the heat sink, but I'm just displaying it for you guys here so that you can see it clearly um, It's not a Tesla wall, but you know for the price this thing is absolutely outstanding uh, here's a good shot of the thickness of it, roughly about 7 inches thick. And uh, I'll give you a good look at the bottom of it here as well so that you can see all of the connections are, are very easy. 
uh, it doesn't take a genius to figure this out and if you guys have figured out how to mine something like this should be relatively simple for you so you know if you've considered this but you're seeing the price tag from what everybody else pays for solar you probably haven't considered it until looking at something like this so let's move on here uh, let's talk about GrowWatt so this is GrowWatt's website you can see they've got residential inverters they have the two different categories there that I had mentioned the 3000 through 7600 and then the 8200 through the 11,400. I'm going to take a look at the specs. Now, basically what changes here is the inputs and the outputs, but what does not change is the voltage. Okay, so its operating voltage range is 50 volts through 550 volts. You'll see there in the middle. And in my particular case, uh, I have 30 solar panels total, and there will be two strings of 15. Those 15 solar panels will be series, and then the positive and negative that's left over will make up one string. And there are a total of two inputs, or excuse me, four inputs, but two strings on this particular uh, inverter. Now, once you get to the larger series, uh, the 8200 through the 11,400, uh, that's going to give you four strings. So you could have multiple arrays of solar panels. And the big thing to know is you cannot exceed 550 volts. Well, my particular solar panels are, I think, 37 volts uh, open or about 30 volts uh, normal production, but you, you need to go by what the open rating is. And here's a look at a few of the other products that they carry here. So just keep in mind, um, you want to understand how that works. Now here's a, a larger view of the spec sheet for those there. Actually, that's the older one. They had uh, 2,500. Anyway, this is the company that I purchased it from, Signature Solar. They are based out of Texas, where I am currently at. And uh, shipping wasn't too bad. Uh, if you take a look at the grid tie inverters, you have uh, a 10,000 and 11,400 and then you will see the uh, 6,000 that I have. But notice the X at the end of the model number here as opposed to the XH. Uh, the difference being that the XH is off-grid capable and will work with batteries, whereas the one that I have is only a grid tie system. They are out of stock currently, unfortunately. Um, let's take a look and see if they have anything else in stock. So, yes, we do have the 10,000 in stock at 14, or, yeah, 1,400. Uh, but notice, even though you've got more output and input, voltage cannot exceed 550. Uh, this one at 42 amps, so uh, something to be mindful of. Uh, next, we're going to take a listen here to Will Prouse here in just a second. But before we do that, uh, this is the user interface for their website. Uh, this is not my video. I just wanted you guys to see what it looks like firsthand. Uh, it just gives you your basically all the information you want to know about your solar system and how it's producing. Uh, so, like I said, next is Will Prouse, and he is DIY Solar Power. Uh, give him a like and subscribe. And on the bottom, we have the main power connection, a communication port, USB for a Wi-Fi dongle, two separate MPPT solar charge controllers that can be used with these MC4 adapters, a main on and off switch. And these connections make this the easiest grid tie inverter that I've ever seen. So this quick connector can connect to SO cable, which is like an oversized extension cable. You put the conductors in here and tighten them down. 
then you screw it together, and then you plug it in. Once this is connected to the grid, all you have to do is connect some solar panels, and that's it. Yeah, so here are the solar panels that I purchased. It's from a company called Santan Solar. They are based out of Arizona, and they basically sell used panels from existing solar farms whenever they upgrade. Uh, they have some that are cracked vinyl, some that have snail trails, some that are just simply used with no defects, uh, some that are brand new. And they have a variety and their prices are outstanding. Uh, there is a guy named Rusty there currently that I spoke with and Rusty gave me an awesome deal, made sure that I got an excellent batch of solar panels and I will show you guys what those look like. Uh, these are currently listed at 72. However, if you're buying in bulk, I believe you can get that down to somewhere around $57 per panel, which is unheard of. The next thing you got to worry about though is shipping. Uh, it does cost about $500 in shipping to ship a pallet of these, which they can fit. I believe they said they don't like to exceed 24 on a pallet, uh, but I had 30 on mine. It seemed to do okay. This is the very bottom solar panel on that pallet and I would expect it to be in the worst shape and as you can see uh, we have just slight discoloration in the bus bars but no green uh, corrosion in there and don't see any snail trails in them uh, these were outstanding panels they do have some blemishes on the outer bezel the black part but man not worried about that this is going on top of my shop it's it's like a 15 foot tall shop so I'm not concerned with a few little scratches here and there for $57 a piece I also got free shipping and I'll tell you all about that in a moment but here is the wire that I recommend getting you want to use a Timco uh, you want to make sure it's hundred percent copper these particular ones come with your ends already included and you can get various sizes approximately a dollar a foot for a 10 gauge PV wire which is outstanding uh, excellent price and Timco is what you want to get and you got free delivery as well so you might be wondering how much did all of this stuff cost well before we take a look at that here's a little example of how to put these uh, connections on the MC4 connectors in case you have to cut your own lengths. Um, if you don't have a crimp tool you can use these needle nose pliers. Uh, you just want to make sure that you crimp that down tight enough so that that end does not come off. These are very high voltage wires and you do not need that grounding out on something especially if you're unable to escape if you're on a ladder if you're on a metal roof whatever uh, just make sure you put these things together very well they do have the rubber gasket these should be weather resistant uh, you do want to make sure you put them in a place where it's not going to sit in a pool of water but for the most part um, these, these should be uh, pretty much watertight but I do recommend you tighten them all the way down you might need a special tool if you don't have it Here's a look at the receipt for the inverter. This is for the solar panels. And a grand total of $2,846, including my MC4 connectors, my wire, my mounting material, and I don't need a shutoff switch because I already have one. So if you enjoyed this, stay tuned for the next episode. If you would, please give me a like and subscribe. This is a pretty new channel, and I hope you guys enjoy this journey as we go through it together hope to see you on the next episode thanks i'm out